Implicit Differentiation, Level 2. All right, let's jump straight into some examples. Find a derivative of the expression 2x plus 3x squared plus x times y equals 4. So we have an implicit function. So the first step is to take a derivative of both sides. Distributing the derivative sign, we have the following. And so we have that the derivative of 2x is just equal to 2. The derivative of 3x squared is just equal to 6x. And now here, we need to notice that we actually have two functions. So we need to apply the product rule. So applying the product rule, with f of x being x and g of x being y, we have that the derivative of the expression is going to be equal to x times the derivative of y plus y times the derivative of x. And remember, in order to take the derivative of y, we need to apply the chain rule. So we have that the derivative of y is going to be equal to the derivative of y times dy over dx. The derivative of y is just 1. So we just end up with dy over dx, which is the same thing as y prime. And continuing on with the product rule, we have y times the derivative of x, and the derivative of x is just 1. And finally, the derivative of a constant is just 0. So we have the following expression. And then now the next step, after we take derivatives, is to solve for y prime. So again, up to this point, it becomes a standard algebra 1 problem, where we have to solve for y prime. Subtracting 2, 6x, and y to the other side, we have the following, and dividing by x, we have that the final derivative, dy over dx, is going to be equal to the negative of 2 plus 6x plus y over x. And once again, the derivative is expressed in terms of y and x. Let's try the next one. Find a derivative of 1 over x plus 1 over y equals 2. First step is to take derivative of both sides. The derivative of 1 over x is the same thing as the derivative of x raised to the power of negative 1. And the derivative of 1 over y is the same thing as the derivative of y raised to the power of negative 1. And the derivative of a constant is just 0. So now, the derivative of x raised to the power of negative 1 is just an application of the power rule. Negative x raised to the power of negative 2. And now here, the derivative of y raised to the power of negative 1 requires the application of the chain rule. Remember, y is a function of x. So we need to apply the chain rule. So applying the chain rule, we have the derivative of y raised to the power of negative 1 times dy over dx. And this is equal to negative y raised to the power of negative 2 times y prime. So substituting all those values into the expression, we have the following. And once again, we solve for y prime. So we have the following expression. And the final derivative is going to be equal to negative x raised to the power of negative 2 over y raised to the power of negative 2. And remembering that negative exponents can be rewritten by taking its reciprocal, we have that the final derivative is equal to y squared over x squared. All right, let's try the next one. Final derivative of x squared times y plus x times y squared equals 3x. All right, like always, we take a derivative of both sides, distribute the negative signs to each term. We are going to have to end up taking a derivative of x squared times y. So here, notice that we have a product of two different functions. So we need to apply the product rule. In addition, in the next term, we also have a product of two functions. So we also need to take the product rule. And the derivative of 3x is just equal to 3. So let's take care of the product rule here. I'm going to let f of x to be equal to x squared and g of x to be equal to y. Applying the product rule, we have x squared times the derivative of y plus y times the derivative of x squared. So once again, the derivative of y is just y prime. And the derivative of x squared is just 2x. So we have the following expression. Now let's take care of the next product. So the derivative of x times y squared is going to be equal to x times the derivative of y squared plus y squared times the derivative of x. The derivative of y squared is going to be equal to the derivative of y times dy over dx. So that gives us that the derivative of y squared is going to be equal to 2y times y prime plus y squared because the derivative of x is just 1. So now we need to solve for y prime. So it's not going to be that easy. The first thing we need to do is we need to get all the y primes on one side of the equation sign and get everything else on the other side of the equation sign. So doing that, we have the following. And the reason why we want to do this, get all the y primes on one side, is that the end goal is to factor out a y prime out of the expressions, like so. We solve for y prime by dividing by the expression x squared plus 2xy. So that gives us that the final derivative is equal to 3 times negative 2xy minus y squared over x squared plus 2xy. So more complicated derivative requires you to actually factor out the y prime term from the expression in order to ultimately solve for it. Let's try the next one. Find a derivative of 
y times sine of x squared equals x times sine of y squared. First step, take a derivative of both sides. And notice here that we need to apply the proc rule. So the proc rule is going to give us y times the derivative of sine of x squared plus sine of x squared times the derivative of y. In addition, the other side also requires a product rule. So that's going to give us x times the derivative of a sine of y squared plus sine of y squared times the derivative of x. So carrying out the product rule, we have that the derivative of sine of x squared is going to be equal to cosine of x squared times 2x after applying the chain rule. And the derivative of y is just y prime after applying the chain rule. Now going to the other side of the equal sign, we have that the derivative of sine of y squared is going to be equal to cosine of y squared times 2y times y prime. So notice that we actually apply the chain rule twice. And the derivative of x is just 1. This expression signifies to the following. The next step is to solve for y prime. The way you want to do this is get all the terms that have the y prime term into one side and everything else to the other side of the equation sign. So doing that, we have the following. And factoring out the y prime, the expression signifies to the following. And solving for y prime, by dividing by this entire expression, we have that the final derivative is going to be equal to 2xy times cosine of x squared minus sine of y squared over 2xy times cosine of y squared minus sine of x squared. Let's try the next one. Final derivative of e raised to the power of x squared times y equals x plus y. We take derivatives of both sides. And here, we are going to have to use a combination of the chain rule and the product rule. So the derivative of e raised to the power of x squared times y is going to be equal to e raised to the power of x squared times y times the derivative of x squared times y, which in itself requires the application of the product rule. So applying the product rule, we have x squared times y prime plus y times 2x. Going to the other side of the equal sign, we have that the derivative of x is just 1, and the derivative of y is going to be equal to y prime. So we have the following expression, and once again, we want to get all the terms that have the y prime into one side, and everything else to the other side. Doing that, we have the following. Factoring out the y prime, we have the following expression. And finally, the final derivative after solving for y prime is going to be equal to 1 minus 2 times xy e raised to the power of x squared times y over x squared times e raised to the power of x squared times y minus 1. All right, let's try the final example. Final derivative of tangent of x minus y equals y over 1 plus x squared. Applying derivatives to both sides, we have the following. And so the derivative of tangent of x minus y is going to be equal to secant squared of x minus y times 1 minus y prime. And the derivative of the other side, okay, notice that we have a quotient. So we need to apply the quotient rule. Our f of x is going to be equal to y, and our g of x is going to be equal to 1 plus x squared. So applying the, the quotient rule, we have the following. Now that we've taken derivatives, we need to get all the terms with the y prime to one side and everything else to the other side. In order to do this, we distribute the secant squared of x minus y to the quantity 1 minus y prime. So we have the following. And then what we do is we add secant squared of x minus y times y prime to both sides. So we have the following expression. And here what we want to do is we, we want to add these values by finding a common denominator. Doing so, we have the following expression. So now that we have a common denominator, we can add expressions. So that reduces to the following. We multiply by the denominator both sides. We have the following expression. And here, finally, are able to factor out the y prime. And starting for y prime, we have that the final derivative is equal to the quantity 1 plus x squared raised to the power of 2 times secant squared of x minus y plus 2xy over the quantity 1 plus x squared plus secant squared of x minus y times the quantity of 1 plus x squared raised to the power of 2. So for the most part, you will probably find the derivative of easier functions. These examples show just how complicated these derivatives can be. All right, so armed with the technique of implicit differentiation, we will learn how to find the derivative of inverse trigonometric functions in our next video.